So last night I saw the movie Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan and this movie was incredible. And even though I think it's amazing, I feel like it could be pretty confusing for a lot of viewers because it moves really fast, it's heavily thematic and very symbolic. So I wanted to make this video to maybe clear up some confusion and give you some new insights into the references and symbols. So to break this movie down, we're gonna use three themes. One, fission versus fusion. Where we'll discuss why half the scenes are in black and white and half the scenes are in color. The fission and fusion titles at the beginning of the movie, Oppenheimer early mental illness and the apple injection. Two, stealing from God. Where we'll discuss the Prometheus quote opening the movie, Oppenheimer's relationships, Oppenheimer's delusions of death and suffering, and the meaning of the quote, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And three, inevitable self-destruction. Where we'll discuss Einstein ignoring Strauss, Strauss's plot to take down Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer's hearing, Strauss's hearing, and the final scene in the film with Oppenheimer and Einstein that determines the fate of our world. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, fission versus fusion. At the very beginning of the film, two of the opening shots include one titled fission and one titled fusion. One of them includes Killian Murphy's Robert Oppenheimer in color and the other includes Robert Downey Jr.'s Louis Strauss in black and white. The terms nuclear fission and nuclear fusion both describe two processes that produce enormous amounts of energy. And in this movie's case, they're the processes required to create the atomic and the hydrogen bomb. And the purpose of these two words opening up the film beside our two main characters is to symbolize two opposing forces, of course being Oppenheimer and Strauss. This entire rivalry between the two main characters is like an uncontrollable chain reaction between atoms, an uncontrollable reaction between philosophies, between personalities, between egos. And just like a hydrogen bomb or an atomic bomb, this can only lead to disaster and self-destruction for both of them. During the press tour, Christopher Nolan addresses why the film was half in color and half in black and white. He explained that the black and white scenes are from the perspective of Strauss. In these scenes, throughout the film, Oppenheimer comes off more and more cold, dismissive, arrogant, and egotistical, and the environment in general appears a lot more controlled. The color scenes are from the perspective of Oppenheimer. These scenes are much more chaotic and tense. Through these scenes, we learn that Oppenheimer, throughout his entire adult life, feels tortured, battling with the anxiety that comes with his own expectations and the pressure of his community, and eventually, his entire country. Oppenheimer was known to not entirely be mentally stable, suffering from severe depression, anxiety, and addiction, even as a young university student, as we see early in the film. We get these super brief visuals of nuclear reactions, sparks, gases, flames, which are quite jarring and startling to the audience, which represents Oppenheimer's lifelong lack of mental peace. This largely leads him into making unmeasured and impulsive decisions, such as his consistent infidelity between two women, and his decision to almost poison a professor who embarrasses him, injecting cyanide into an apple. But overall, everything between Oppenheimer and Strauss at first seems peaceful and prosperous. But as the story unfolds, we learn that this is largely about two opposing forces, and Strauss's vengeance on Oppenheimer. And we'll get back to this conflict later. But for now, I want to discuss Oppenheimer's creation of the atomic bomb in theme number two, stealing from God. In the opening sequence of this film, we read two lines summarizing the story of the Greek mythological figure, Prometheus. I can't perfectly picture the lines in my head because I've only seen the movie once, but it was something along the lines of, Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humankind. In return, the gods chained Prometheus to a rock for eternity. This story and this line symbolically parallels Oppenheimer's journey in creating the atomic bomb. Prometheus was a rebellious figure in Greek mythology, fooling the gods in order to benefit 
humankind. Similarly to how Oppenheimer had close ties with the Communist Party with Tatlock, played by Florence Pugh. He supported the workers that challenged the organizations that he was supposed to be aligned with. And he donated a lot of his inherited money to left-wing efforts, such as the Loyalists in the Spanish Civil War. All of these decisions were helpful to individuals, but were self-sabotaging for his own professional career because they harmed those above. And we'll get into the massive consequences of that in theme number three, a little later on. Prometheus is most popular known for stealing fire from Greek god Zeus and giving it to the rest of humanity to spark intelligent life and develop civilization. This ties in really closely with how Oppenheimer defies the limitations of God with a groundbreaking, life-altering, all-powerful creation. Prometheus was eventually punished by Zeus by being chained to the side of a mountain where an eagle would eat his liver forever. And of course, this would tie in with how Oppenheimer becomes tortured by his own professional and psychological self-destruction in the aftermath. The more recognition he earns, the more he is eaten alive by the guilt and shame and anxiety, very clearly symbolized by the stomping, cheering crowds that create the same sound that we hear early in the film when he has anxiety attacks. It's also symbolized by the visuals of cheering crowds quickly flashing into suffering victims and burned corpses. This could all be seen as some form of God's punishment, the same way Zeus punished Prometheus. Even the holy name of the Trinity test is also a clear representation of the atomic bomb's godlike power. And when the test is successful, as we witness these silent, horrifically beautiful visuals, we hear Oppenheimer say, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This is a quote from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says this line as he urges Prince Arjuna to go to war and fight and kill. As Krishna says this line, he transforms into his multi-armed god form, Vishnu. This quote and this moment together symbolizes Oppenheimer's inner conflict of becoming godlike and immeasurably destructive like Krishna versus remaining conflict averse and obeying a more rigid moral code like Arjuna. Just like Prometheus, Oppenheimer will forever be haunted by the consequences of his own success. Theme number three, inevitable self-destruction. As said before, at first in the film, everything seems peaceful between Oppenheimer and Strauss. They seem fine. In the first scene between the two of them, Louis Strauss is offering Oppenheimer a position to head the Institute of Advanced Studies at Princeton, a very prestigious position. As Oppenheimer is considering it, the two of them notice Albert Einstein standing by a pond. Oppenheimer chats with Einstein briefly, and as Strauss goes to join them, Einstein leaves and dismissively ignores Strauss's greeting. Strauss is bothered by this, assuming that Oppenheimer is speaking unkindly of him behind his back. And this is the spark that begins Strauss's distaste for Oppenheimer in the story that we're viewing. In another scene, Oppenheimer humiliated Strauss at a congressional hearing as they discussed whether to ban the sale of radioisotopes. In that moment, Oppenheimer mercilessly exposed the gap in expertise and intelligence between the two of them. And this was just another one of likely many moments that grew Strauss's anger towards Oppenheimer. And the final straw that ended Strauss's relationship with Oppenheimer was their polar opposite political views on the development of nuclear weapons. Oppenheimer wanted international agreement, control, and openness because he understood how how catastrophic these weapons could become. Strauss wanted US supremacy over all other countries when it comes to nuclear weapons because he refuses to trust other countries the way Oppenheimer can. And additionally, Strauss became suspicious of Oppenheimer because he wasn't behind the development of new nuclear weapons when there are other countries who could be working on these things like hydrogen bombs. It was as if Oppenheimer could be working for another country. As the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, the AEC, Strauss devised a plot to expose enough evidence for Oppenheimer's security clearance as part of the AEC to be revoked. And when Oppenheimer appeals, he will have to answer to a hearing with the AEC. 
As mentioned in theme number one, the evidence used to revoke Oppenheimer's security clearance, such as his mental instability, his impulsive habits, his poor decision-making, his clumsy moments of spilling secrets with the wrong people, his involvement with communist groups, it all makes for a great case that he's aligned with another country like Russia and just can't be trusted by a group like the AEC. And as you see in the film, the hearing was obviously so biased against Oppenheimer because the members of the AEC that were hosting this were also not very fond of Oppenheimer's anti-weapon redevelopment interests either, just like Strauss. Oppenheimer's security clearance as a member of the AEC's General Advisory Council was revoked. He was no longer a member. But also, parallel to this hearing, we witness another hearing, but for Strauss, where they are holding a vote for him to become a member of President Eisenhower's cabinet as Secretary of Commerce. As everything is all looking good for his vote into the Senate, we suddenly see physicist David Hill speak up, played by Rami Malek. We saw David earlier in the film trying to collect the signature from Oppenheimer to stop the bombing of Hiroshima. But Oppenheimer rejected it because he was way too caught up in his personal journey to complete the atom bomb that he was so passionate about. And this was after the powerful Nazis were defeated, so there wasn't really any need for any kind of major catastrophic new weaponry. So David clearly is a good man, and his good character is demonstrated even further when he steps up at Strauss's hearing to defend Oppenheimer. At the hearing, David speaks up about Strauss and generates enough suspicion about Strauss's intentions and his actions to deny his welcome into the Senate. Such a situation in a cabinet hearing also very rarely happens, so it was enormously humiliating for Strauss. And the result of Strauss's hearing is not enough to get Oppenheimer back into the AEC, so they both end up losing majorly. And in the final scene, we return to the initial conversation between Oppenheimer and Einstein. At first, it was in black and white, where Strauss thought Oppenheimer was speaking ill of him to Einstein. But this time, it's in color, where we find out what Oppenheimer truly said. Oppenheimer said that the near zero chance of the atom bomb destroying the planet with a chain reaction has truly happened. However, that chain reaction isn't atoms, it's us in a never-ending race between countries to develop the more powerful machine for killing. Like Prometheus, like Oppenheimer, and like the atom bomb, humanity is destined for self-destruction. All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me your recommendations. And what did you think about Oppenheimer? I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.